Well, I think RC drag racing has always been there. It's always been more of the homebrew cars. It never really took off. I mean, you remember years ago, we were, I think, down in Orange County where they had the drag races, right? And it was a very small group of people. And you kind of go look at those cars and it looked very complicated, right? And kind of intimidating because those guys running foam tires, cars are going super fast, super straight. So now let's fast forward literally, what, 10, 12, 15 years later, we saw a whole bunch of people just modifying their short course trucks into what we see today in, in drag racing where people start saying, hey, I want to put this body on it. I want to make a, you know, more of a, a muscle car out of it. And then you have J Concepts and ProLine start making bodies and it starts blowing up from there. So I, you see a lot of people getting into it. People can go and race in their cul-de-sac. They can go race in some industrial parking lot. And, and it just creates this whole different like social aspect of it. You just go out, run your car show up to the whatever, whatever place is having it and just go drag race. And I mean, you can see kids doing it to sons and daughters and you know, people my age, which I'm getting kind of old now, right? I mean, so I, I really think that's what's kind of created and evolved the, the whole scene. Pretty much just kind of rounding up to what people are seeing with Street Outlaws and being able to do it on a, a 10 scale size on, you know, a, I don't know, what, 100th of a budget compared to what those cars are today. The 22S started as a project in many people's minds. It was an idea that we came up with a long time ago, you know, and initially, like I said, we, we got turned down on the concept, you know, mentioned it was too niche, we shouldn't look at it, look at bigger things. Um, but during that time, you know, we did get the traction to start development on it. And honestly, our timing with um, the development of the car, the release of the car, was perfect because we hit, I really think, where, where we're at with the peak of this. And uh, Low Seed, you know, we really wanted to kind of step it up and, and provide an RTR platform for these drag racers and, and people just coming into the hobby. Um, is RC drag racing as easy as it looks? I would say no. You know, you go into playing around with, with drag cars and things like that, you go, eh, it's it's gonna be a blast to get down that, that strip. I mean, how hard can it be? I drove motorcycles, I fly airplanes. Yeah, a drag car, you just go straight and go down the road. How wrong was I? Um, the challenge with a drag car is you have these overpowered cars. They need to go as straight as possible. You're not allowed to have any type of throttle or steering control, hence a gyro or AVC. With our car, you don't have that. As easy as it seems, it's all reaction time, making your car go as straight as possible and just have enough speed to win the race. Because I, I mean, at the end of the day, you could have a guy that car, his car will do 70 miles an hour, but he can't go straight. And that goes back to just, just the geometry stuff we learned from our days of 110 scale off-road racing. We were able to pull some of the TLR knowledge over, right? So uh, my experience, Frank Root's experience, Ryan Dunford's experience, all helping you know um, one of our, our newer designers, Travis Bear, dial in the car. We have a great group of people from the TLR brands to Axial to to Losi and it's really neat when we could all get together and kind of discuss all of our projects. One of my ideas was hey let's raise the transmission on these cars. Um, so back in the day when we had the original 22 we started raising the transmission up just to give it more forward traction coming out of the turn. He said we we love you know, raising the transmission up and, and gaining a whole bunch of traction. So our engineers and myself, we, we decided, well, let's, let's give it a shot. So we, we made a, a raised transmission spacer, threw it on the track, and what do you know? We got a whole bunch of traction. So the reason we decided to keep it uh, without ABC and to keep it 2S was because of the rules. Where the challenge comes in, mostly the fun, is trying to control you know, all that power with two wheels going down the strip at, you know, 55 plus miles an hour. So most of the races for drags are going to be 2S rated. We made sure that it was ready to go out of the box to where you can just go throw down wherever, whether it's a big organized event or just racing your buddies in the cul-de-sac. Well, some of the challenges while developing the, the low C drag car was the tires. The tires were uh, a definitely a tricky situation, you know, maximum grip, and they also have to look good. We, uh, we took our time, we tried many different tires, many different compounds, and we finally 
came up with a special compound, so special that it actually smokes while you're uh, heating them up. After you, after you get that smoke, you get on the track and uh, they grip really well. Uh, we extended the body mounting post out further to more simulate a real body clip on a, on a real car. We've also changed the whole chassis. You know, the plastic chassis are nice, they're light, but we ended up changing the whole chassis into an aluminum chassis. You know, these cars are hitting, you know, what, maybe 40 plus miles an hour in that 132 feet. So, I mean, and if you lose it, you're going sideways, possibly into a concrete curb or something. This provided a much stiffer, stiffer car and a lot better grip on the road. To keep the, the classic lines of a, a 69 Camaro, you have to have the undercuts. We ended up having to use a three-piece mold um, to be able to get this to have the, the undercuts and look like a proper 69 Camaro. With the three-piece bodies, the molded grille, the headlights, the taillights, I mean, putting that in there to where, when that's sitting there, you know, it's, it's dusk, right? And you got your lights on and you're going up to the line. I mean, how cool is that looking? We went to events, we went to, meetings and, and all sorts of stuff. We also got phone calls out to, to customers that were in the scene. And a lot of their, their information was put into the 22S drag car. You know, you buy a 22S, whether it's a roller or an RTR, and you can go out there and just throw down and have fun with it, you know? And I mean, it's just about going straight. And that's one thing we dialed into the 22S is just make that thing go straight, right? Make it easier for the consumer, you know, mechanically go straight with no driver aids with ABC or any type of steering gyro or throttle gyro. So people love to grab their car, take it out to the track. Something didn't work for them, so they take it back home, they get to wrench on it all week, take it out the next weekend. And I really just think that overall, the sport is just gonna keep on growing and growing. The fact that you have these events just pop up a week ahead of time and people just go meet somewhere on a Friday night to go do a drag event. Um, that's the beauty of it. As long as it stays grassroots, I can see this being around for a long time. Creating the drag car was absolutely a blast. I mean, going from, you know, just prototypes to, to testing tire compounds to choosing wheels. I mean, it's a big kid's dream. I mean, really just diving in and, and creating all aspects of the car really is, is second to none. I mean, you, you can't you can't fathom how how much fun it was and and how rewarding it is in the end.